podcast i guess one person i don't have anyone else to bounce ideas off so enjoy the cringe i guess well basically what i want to talk here today is about godzilla versus king kong and what an amazing movie that was now in this video i i can't put any footage from the movie or my ass is clapped like that so Feel free to minimize the video. I don't know. <laughs> if you really want to know my opinion about the Godzilla movie versus King Kong, uh, then go ahead and minimize the video because there won't be much on the screen at all. I'm also going to talk about Hathaway's Flash. It's coming out soon, by this year. A little bit about Hideki Anno. He is living the dream. The new Kamen Rider series, no, not series, a movie, was announced. So, I want to talk a little bit about that. I guess, I don't know what else. <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of things I want to talk. I also want to talk about Sony and Super Hero Wars, the future for Super Hero Wars. Uh, I wanted to make a, no, I am going to make a video about the future of Super Hero Wars. The thing is that I have a job now. It's a 8 to 5 job. Sometimes I have to work overtime. So the video is being worked on. I would say it's like 30% done. I'm looking to have it finished before, I don't know, maybe one week from from today, from Monday. Uh, I, it's today's Monday, right? Yeah, today's Monday. Monday 5th. And... Wow, yeah, it's Monday, 8 p.m. Anyways, I'm sidetracking, losing track of what I'm going to talk about. So, Godzilla! Let's talk about Godzilla. Also, I was kind enough to put timestamps on this video to make this easier for you. You want to see what I'm going to talk about. So, first and foremost, Godzilla vs. King Kong. No spoilers. I thought the movie was amazing. Godzilla, King Kong had their own characters, uh, their own personalities, better said. And it was so character driven by them. Oh my god, and the animation, no, sorry, not animation, what am I talking about? The action on this movie was freaking fantastic. The, there was, I don't think there was a moment where I said, I'm bored. If anything, the, the things that I didn't like about the movie was the Millie Bobby Brown uh, character. Uh, her character was, eh, I, I think she didn't need to be in this movie. She was just a plot device and Apex apparently doesn't know what security camera is because there's some scenes where, okay, so this is a tiny spoiler, but but you kind of get it not too soon into the movie. She basically, with two others, was able to infiltrate a highly sophisticated facility of Apex. And no one caught them until, I don't know, much later in the movie. I'm not going to tell you when. But damn, that those parts with her were really, really bad. That's probably the weakness of this movie. The other human characters that appear in the movie actually have a purpose and they're actually likable. This movie did did feel like a classic Japan made Godzilla movie. And sure, King Khan is the protagonist in this movie and Godzilla somewhat of a, a villain, 
But, you know, there's a point where, like, yeah, Godzilla, Godzilla's doing this because he has to. There's a reason why. And the reason why they're fighting makes sense. This movie was so well done that the negatives that I have for it doesn't outweigh the positives. Like, there's far more better things happening here in this movie. And they pretty much open the Pandora's box for a future monster verse with more Godzilla movies. I can't wait. Hopefully, one day we get Jet Jaguar and um, Gamera movies. Like, I really love, love to see Gamera with Godzilla. But who knows? Um, also, Legendary truly knows how to treat these Japanese properties with respect. And I really appreciate what they have done with the MonsterVerse. Uh, the first Godzilla movie was a hit or miss. I thought it was great because it arcs back to the original Godzilla from 1950s. And King of All Monsters, or King of the Monsters, Godzilla, the second movie, that one was great. The problem with that movie was the human characters. They weren't that interesting. And um, I guess Kong Skull Island, that was fucking fantastic. Tons of great actors, but eh, you can just kind of ignore them too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they've done a great job with the MonsterVerse. I don't know if there's going to be a Godzilla vs. Pacific Rim. Because they did talk about that being a possibility many years ago. But things have changed, so we don't know. I know the Pacific Rim uh, animation came out for Netflix, and I haven't seen it yet. So, hopefully, um, it's good. I had to check it out whenever I got the time. So, yeah, that's my Godzilla review. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and watch it. It's on HBO Max. Don't go to the theaters to watch a movie. COVID is still a thing. It's still dangerous. Please protect yourselves. Now, going back into Hideki Anno. I think it was on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. They announced the Kamen Rider 50th Anniversary Shin Kamen Rider movie directed by Hideki Anno. Hideki Anno is living his dream. He is now working with Ultraman, Godzilla, and now... Shin Kamen Rider. So, he's living the dream and he'll eventually... Who knows? Maybe they'll give him, hey, here, make a Get a Robo animated series. Make it into a movie. Make it whatever. Just make it. And that can happen because Hideki Anno is known to be a big Gona guy and Get a Robo fan. Kenny Chikawa fan. So, who knows what, what the future holds. I, I'm very happy that Hideki Anno is finally doing things other than Evangelion. Maybe we'll get a third gun. Go go sorry, I can't even talk. A third gun buster movie. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I'm actually, like I said, I'm very happy for the guy. I think he deserves it. A lot of people like to trash talk Evangelion and say that Evangelion is not mecha, but what a lot of people don't understand is that Evangelion is a love letter to the mecha genre. It's not a deconstruction at all. Because. If you're a person that has seen tons of mecha shows from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you know this is that Evangelion doesn't bring anything new. It shows that it has a good direction and a good story. It's not super psychological or anything like that. There's There's been other mecha shows like that. The thing is that people think that mecha shows are like Transformers or Power Rangers, at least in the West. And they think that Evangelion is a bit deconstruction, whatever. But no, no. Evangelion is a great show. And I'm glad Hideki Anno is getting the opportunity to live his dreams. So, now let's talk about Hathaway's Flash. I saw the trailer that dropped not too long ago. Uh, I love it. The CGI that they're using for the mecha, for the Gundams, they look good. A huge improvement from what we've seen in past uh, 3D animations when it comes to Mecha. And I think the future is going to be CGI Mecha. I honestly believe that they're doing a better job and they're learning. And it's going to get even better from this point on. 
And I also believe that Hathaway's Flash may have a moment, I don't know what point in the movie, that's going to talk about Shars Khan attack. And what I mean is that they may actually animate the Amuro versus Shar fight. That's this is me just thinking that's going to happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I want to clear that out, right? So, who knows? Honestly, I, I I can't wait for this movie. It looks good. I'm not a fan of Hathaway at all. I actually hated him in Shar's Counterattack. So we'll see. We'll see what happened here. Um. Oh yeah, there's also build real real build or build real. The new Gundam build series, I guess, is based on real life. And I I saw the first episode and I was completely disappointed by it. The acting was over the top. The story is somewhat cringe and boring. Nothing original. They're playing this way too safe, too safe for their own good. The Gunplas that they're using for this, they are mediocre. They, they look horrible. The RX-78 is nothing special to him. Um, the fights, they're not even that good. They look like a um, video game. Uh, they look like a video game cutscene. That's how they look. They look like a PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, uh, Gundam vs. Introduction CGI. They're not good. I'm really disappointed by it. They, they could have gone a different direction, but Sunrise just wants to save as much money as they can and sell you as many versions of the RX-78 that they can, or the Shar Saku. And that's unfortunate, but that's a fact. That's something that happens. That's something that they want. So, I'm not looking forward to that show. I'm actually wondering when the new Gundam series is going to be announced. Speaking of Gundam series being announced, there was a huge uh, misinformation that happened uh, last week. People thought that Gundam 00 was getting a sequel, but no. What happened was that the director for Gundam 00, he submitted a basic plot to Sunrise to see if they give him the green light to move forward with a sequel. There's no actual sequel confirmed. The only sequel we got in was the um, live action, whatever it's called, for Gundam Dolo that brought back Graham Aker. Oh, I just hit myself there. But yeah, that, that's about it. There's no Gundam Dolo sequel yet. At the moment of this recording, nothing is official. If there was something official, Sunrise would have made a big deal about it and people would be losing their minds. I expect that we're going to hear something about a brand new Gundam series near the end of this year. Right after Hathaway's Flash comes out. What is it going to be? Who knows? I don't think it's going to be um, a sequel to Iron Blood Orphans. I don't think it's going to be a sequel. It's going to be a brand new series. Whatever it is, I can't wait for it. I know that Ken Okuyama is working on a mecha show. Um, that's from Sunrise. I'm trying to remember the name of that show. I think it was something about Kyo Kyokai? Kyokai Senki. Kyokai Senki. Or War Machine. So the designs for those mechas are based on Ken Okuyama. If you don't know who Ken Okuyama is, he's a popular um, mechanical designer. He designs cars. He designed... He redesigned the Gundam RX-78 that we got the Gunpla for, the G-40. That was his work. But this anime series also has the work of Ipe uh, Gyabu, who worked on Gundam Adam Blood Orphans designs. He was the guy who made the Gundam designs for that show. And then you also have Kenji Terao. I'm going to butcher this name because I'm a terrible person. But I'm remembering from my mind. Um, I think it was Kenji Teraoka. Teraoka Kenji. And Kanetake Ebikawa. Those guys are great mechanical designers. So I'm looking forward for this series. I really hope it's good. This series has a good staff behind it. I believe it's a brand new studio. I had their first work of Sunrise Beyond. Which was formerly known as Zebek. Uh, who also worked on previous um, mecha shows. 
So they, they, they already know what they're doing. So I really hope that um, turns out to be a good show and nothing boring or anything like that. The, the designs for the for the War Machine looks amazing. I really love that design. And I can't wait for the Gumpla. Well, not Gumpla. Plamo. That's the real name for it. Um, so, yeah. We just can't wait for that one. So, what else can we talk about before I go to sleep? Because I'm a little bit tired. Uh, let's see. I did say we're going to talk about Hathaway's Flash. Um, we talk about the new Gundam shows. What else? What else? What am I missing? Let's see. Godzilla and King Kong. We covered that up. Oh, yeah. A little bit about Sony and Super Bowl Wars. A little preview of the video I'm making. So, you all know how Sony is moving all their offices to North America, um, California. And people are blaming the social justice warriors for some, some reason. Uh, I don't know why. Then they're also blaming the Sony censorship, whatever. And there's something I want to talk about of this. Super Bowl Wars is not going to be affected directly by this. Super Bowl Wars has the backing of a huge company known as Bandai Namco, who has worldwide representation. This means that if they need permission from Sony of America to release a game, they have someone already prepared for that. Unlike other developers who don't have that power, who don't have that funding or that backing, for them, it's a lot more difficult to reach out to Sony of America. Uh, Sony pretty much ditched their developers that put them on the map. A really, really dick move. And the reason why Sony did this? Money. The PlayStation was not selling well in Japan. The PlayStation 3 was doing well. The PlayStation 4 was doing well, but not enough. It was not doing better than the Switch, the PlayStation 4, or the PlayStation 3 compared to the 3DS. Nintendo was kicking their ass, in Japan at least. And still is. Sony doesn't sell that well in Japan. Because gamers in Japan are mostly mobile gamers. Mobile games are huge in Japan. So Sony thought, hey, we're losing a lot of money. Let's move our offices to the United States. After all, Sony, as a company, uh, besides the video game division, is losing money. It's a dying company. And the only thing that's keeping it afloat is the console division, the video game division. And in order to save cost, because this whole movement was done to save money, they moved their offices to the United States. They probably have very... Um, very poor tax laws. They don't get taxed enough. So they can exploit that. And yeah, that, that's basically what it is. The reason when they moved to, to California, the whole offices, it was because of the money. It has nothing to do with social justice warriors. And people talking about the censorship like it's something brand new from the past five to f or six years. No. Sony has been censoring games since its inception. Okay? Look up uh, for Sony censored games from the 90s all the way to the 2000s. When the PlayStation 3 released, they didn't care much about censorship because they needed to sell video games. They were desperate because if the PlayStation 4 didn't sell, they were going to go under. It, that would have been it for Sony because PlayStation, uh, can't even talk. because the PlayStation 3 made a big hole in their pockets and they were bleeding money. So what does this have to do with Super Bowl Wars? Like I said earlier, Super Bowl Wars is not going to have an issue bringing the games to the PlayStation. And by what I've seen, it's, it looks like Super Bowl Wars is moving to more multi-console, obviously. For the past couple of games that have come out, have also come out for Switch and for the Steam, except for Super Bowl Wars T. That hasn't come out for Steam for some reason. I don't know if it's because of COVID or whatever. Uh, because to my understanding from what I've seen and what I've read, Super Bowl Wars on Steam did really well in the Asian regions. So don't expect Super Bowl Wars to come to the West anytime soon. And the reason being because it's very niche and it's not going to sell. But in Asia, in Southeast Asia, it's going to sell well. So you're going to have the English translation. 
So don't worry about that. So that's a positive. I think that the hmm, the only negative I can think of right now is since Super Bowl Wars, the division Super Bowl Wars had to close down their mobile game. There hasn't been any official reason why, but one can assume that it's because of all the licenses that game had. Right? So, the reason why, kind of concerning, because they closed that division, the mobile game. But the other mobile game is doing just fine. Sorry, I just got a little tight track here. Sorry for the... Uh, Okay, almost lost my train of thought here. <laughs> um, so basically what I was saying is that the only thing that's concerning me about Super Bowl Wars is the fact that they they had to close down the mobile game probably because of the licenses issues and was too costly for them. I don't know. There hasn't been an official explanation, only a speculation. And that game was bringing in a lot of money. I don't know if Bandai sees Super Bowl Wars profitable. And that's probably a reason why we haven't seen more Super Bowl Wars. And probably not. Maybe it's just me exaggerating, overthinking this too much. But to be honest, I would rather them take their sweet time bringing a brand new Super Bowl Wars than to give me a yearly game because you can see the drop of quality when they release games in a yearly basis. Happens with Call of Duty, happened with um, Battlefield, and obviously I bring those two games because they're very popular and you can see the degrading in releasing those games every year and it's happened with Super Bowl Wars. So it's better for them to just hold it back a bit, work on the next game carefully, and release it when it's done. We don't want another cyberpunk. <laughs> we don't want any um, Fallout 76 or anything like that. So, for those people wondering what's going to happen with Super Bowl Wars, it's going to be fine. There's going to be a Super Bowl Wars. Terada himself said that they're still working on it. And once it's completed or once they're ready, they will announce it. Hopefully, by the anniversary, it's coming out real soon. All right, guys. So, that's all I got for today. Uh, I hope to see you. Not well, how can I see you? That's dumb. I hope to do this again in the future. I'm thinking I'm doing this every Monday. We'll see what happens. I've, again, like I said, I have a eight to five job now, so it's kind of difficult. But I'm gonna give it my all. Uh, my YouTube dreams will not die so easily. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later. Again, I said I see you all later, and that's wrong. I like to hear from you all later. So comment on the comment section below. I want to know your thoughts on what I said. Do you like Godzilla? Do you have any questions? Do you want me to cover anything particular? Um, I don't know. Go ahead and comment in the section below and I'll see you around. Again, I said I see you and I can't see you. <laughs> all right. Take care.